Hey guys, in this video we'll cover the loop cut and slide tools. Quick reminder, this lesson is from our complete intro to Blender course that we're offering for free for a limited time on YouTube. If you're new here, I'd recommend starting at the beginning of the course. I've added a link in the description. All right, go ahead and open up Blender and let's jump right in. To begin this lesson, go ahead and start a new file. I've already done so, but remember you can do that from the final menu by picking new general, and then you'll start a new file and no need to save the one you were working on. In this file, let's start by deleting the default cube. So go ahead and select it, then hold down shift, press the letter X and press enter to delete. And then hold down shift, press the letter A to bring up the add menu. And under the mesh dropdown, go ahead and pick cylinder. Next up, press tab to switch to edit mode and click once in space to deselect everything. Then just so all these vertices aren't here, let's go ahead and press two to switch to edge selection mode. Those vertices are still there. They're just not quite so prominently displayed. Okay, in this lesson, we're gonna talk about the loop cut tool and how we can use it to create edge loops and then manipulate them to create the types of shapes we need. Now, while the loop cut tool is over there on the left-hand side, we should use the keyboard shortcut, not only to make it faster, but also to give us a little bit of upfront functionality with it. So the keyboard shortcut for the loop cut tool, hold down the control key and press R. Then you can let go of that. Then move your cursor onto the cylinder. And if you're hovering in a certain way where it seems to try to be doing some sort of vertical thing here, that's not in the right spot. Just somewhere over the middle part here of the cylinder, you should see this yellow ring. Now your cursor could kind of be anywhere. As long as you see this horizontal yellow ring, go ahead and click once. Then notice if you move your mouse up or down, you are adding an edge loop. So that was the first click. And then the second click right now, you are sliding that edge loop up and down. So go ahead and click somewhere. And now you're done adding an edge loop. So the loop cut tool allows you to add an edge loop and then slide it into position with the second click. Now we already know this, but the purpose of adding a loop cut is so that now you could press something like the letter S on your keyboard for scale, and then you could move this in or out and adjust the shape. You can go ahead and click to set that down. So that's cool. Let's talk about a few more things we can do with that tool though. So let's undo back, control Z on a PC or command Z on a Mac to undo. And let's undo back, it seems like two steps depending on how much you did before you created that loop cut. Hey everyone, we're doing something a little unconventional here. And for a limited time, we're giving you access to one of our paid courses for free right here on YouTube. And this lesson is a part of it. Blender is a beast of a program to learn, but with the right approach, it doesn't have to be. That's why we created Blender Academy, to help people build the Blender skills they need and then go out and get the jobs they want. We hope you find these lessons to be a good investment of your time. If you do, and you're serious about learning Blender, head over to our website and continue learning with us. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe. And now back to the lesson. Okay, so again, press Control R to activate the loop cut tool. And this time, as you're hovering over, notice what happens if you roll the mouse wheel forward, you all of a sudden are creating more than one loop cut. So I want you to be careful not to add so many like I've got going here. Roll it back to where you're adding three or four. Go ahead and click. And now for me, I'm adding three loop cuts at the same time. Notice that they're offset evenly from one another. And then you can move your mouse up or down to slide them up or down together and then click and let go. Now, of course, you could select each one of these edge loops on their own and adjust them. So the top one you could scale in and then you could select the next one and scale it out and do all sorts of things. But as soon as you're done with that tool, you notice in the bottom left corner of your screen that adjust last operation panel is there. Go ahead and click on it. And you notice there's some things you can do. So we could adjust the number of cuts here. Notice what happens if you click to slide that a little bit to the right and add more cuts or click to slide it down to the left. Let's go ahead and no matter what you did, let's adjust it to where we have three cuts. So I have three cuts, you have three cuts. Notice the next thing for smoothness. Go ahead and click and hold down on the number and drag to the right and the left. And you notice that those edge loops are being sort of scaled in and out, but notice that they are not doing so uniformly. So Blender knows, I'm gonna go ahead and go out a bit. 
Blender knows that one reason that you're going to create loop cuts is so you can adjust a gradual transition from here to here and then here to here and then here to here. And so it is gradually transitioning out to the middle loop cut and then back into the final bottom there. And the method it's using for this is here in the menu for fall off. So mine is defaulting to inverse square. If you click to drop that menu down and go ahead and pick another option and you notice as you click and pick through this menu, how things will subtly change or more dramatically change depending on which selection you make. For now, let's go ahead and drop that menu down and come back to inverse square. You can pick anything you'd like. It doesn't really matter for this example. Now go ahead and click once in space to deselect everything. Let's make sure we have edge selection mode turned on. So press two on your keyboard. And let's say that we now have made some gradual adjustments to all of them through the adjust last operation panel, but we wanna make further adjustments to an individual edge loop. Well, remember we can do that. Roll your mouse wheel forward to zoom in a bit. And let's say we want this top edge loop. So not the very top circle, but this edge loop here that we actually cut in using the loop cut tool. So remember the shortcut is to hold down the alt key on your keyboard on a PC or the option key on a Mac and click once on that edge and it will select that entire edge loop. Then you can let go of that key on your keyboard and go ahead and press S and then now you could scale that one in or out independently of the others and then click to set that down. Okay, so we're starting to kind of feel how edge loops can be really handy to help us control and manipulate our geometry into new shapes. And now we see how we can use this loop cut tool to add more than one loop cut at once, and then also to either individually adjust them using our same edge loop selection skills that we've developed, or right after we cut the edge loops in the adjust last operations panel. But let's talk about one more thing that will be handy for us when it comes to manipulating these edge loops. And we're gonna need to undo all the way back to when we had the cylinder before we cut any edge loops in. So go ahead and undo back using Control Z on a PC or Command Z on a Mac. And we wanna undo back to before we had any edge loops cut. And I wanna press two on the keyboard just to be back in edge selection mode, just so I don't see all those extra vertices. Now, let's go ahead and practice using that tool again, the loop cut tool. So hold down control key and press R. Then you can let go of those keys on your keyboard, hover over the middle, and let's add many loop cuts at once. So scroll your mouse wheel up a few times and then click, and then you could slide them around a little bit, whatever you'd like, and then click to finish. The adjust last operations panel pops up uh, because that's where I'd left it. I'm gonna click on the name to collapse it down so we're not worried about it. Now go ahead and click in space once to deselect everything, then press tab to go to object mode. Then let's rotate this a bit. So press R and go ahead and just move your cursor a bit and then click. We wanna rotate it. It won't really be a 45 degree rotation. We're just sort of rotating it and tilting it over on its side a bit. Then press tab to go back to edit mode. Now let's say that we wanted to pick an edge loop and manipulate it, but instead of changing it and changing the shape, we actually decided we need to slide this edge loop way up before we make our changes. So let's see how we would do that. First, we need to select this edge loop. So on a PC, hold down the Alt key. On a Mac, hold down the Option key and click once on this edge to select it. Then let go. So we've selected the edge loop. Now press G for grab. And if you tried to move this up or down or slide this along here, you notice you're actually just manipulating it. And you can't use Z because that would be in the Z direction or Y because that would be in the Y direction. So there is no axis direction that will help you out here. So go ahead and hit the escape key on your keyboard. The way that we can slide this along its existing face. So I've hit escape. So we're outside of using the move tool. If you press G once, you're in the normal move tool. And if you press it a second time, you're now in the slide tool. So you're sliding the edge loop up and down the face. So go ahead and move that up or slide it up, I should say, a little closer to the top and then click to set it down. And now you could press S for the scale tool. And maybe that's what you wanted to do is adjust it after sliding it up in that direction. 
Now, there's more for us to think about when we're manipulating things at an angle like this, but just important to know right now while you're learning the loop cut tool and you're learning to slide those edge loops that you can slide an edge loop after the fact and it's the same thing as using the move tool. You just press G once for the move and then press G a second time to toggle it into an edge slide mode. Okay, so now that we know how to create edge loops using the loop cut tool, we're ready to move on to the next lesson. Congratulations, you made it through the lesson. Did you find this video to be helpful? Let us know by giving it a like. If you're ready for the next lesson, you can find it in this playlist. And if you're interested in learning more about how we can help you build the skills you need, head over to blenderacademy.com. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. And until next time, happy blending. Thank <laughs> you.